Hey guys, in this video, you are going to be learning about digital signatures, their importance and how to use them in PSPDF kit. I will teach you how to create your very own self-signed digital certificates using OpenSSL and then use those to digitally sign a PDF document via PSPDF kit. You will be able to verify the digital signature using Adobe Acrobat Reader. But before we begin, what are digital signatures? Well, you see, in a typical world, we use hand signatures to verify ownership. Think of bank checks, they all require a physical signature to work. And if the signature has been forced, you cannot deposit the check. You can think of digital signatures as just an enhanced version of physical signatures. Once you digitally sign a document, you claim ownership. And whenever someone tries to open the document, they will know that you signed the document. It may also try to alert the viewer if someone has tried to tamper with the document after the initial signature. Digital signatures rely on public key cryptography. In order to digitally sign a document, a user has to generate a public and private key pair unless they already have one. This can easily be done using a tool called OpenSSL and I will show you how to use that in this video. The private key is used to sign the document and another key called the public key is used to verify whether the signature is valid and if the document has been tempered with or not. After a document has been digitally signed, you will see something like this in Adobe Acrobat Reader. It will tell you who signed the document and some details about the digital signature. If you plan on using digital signatures in production, you will have to work with a company like Digicert and buy one. These companies will confirm your identity and make sure you are exactly who you say you are. They will then issue you a certificate and any document signed with that certificate will be certified and validated on all devices and will show information similar to this. If you use a self-signed certificate, however, Adobe will show a warning that the certificate is self-signed and the owner may not be who say they are. As you can see in this case, signature validity is unknown because we do not trust this author. For this video, we will focus only on self-signed certificates, but the process is going to be exactly the same for paid certificates as well. There are multiple ways you can generate a self-signed certificate. You can use Adobe Acrobat Reader or you can use the freely available tool called OpenSSL. OpenSSL comes by default with macOS and Linux, so let's use that. I'm going to head to the terminal and create a new folder called PSPDF Kit Demo. This folder is going to contain all of the code we will be using in this particular video. Now let's run an OpenSSL command and I will explain it as we go along. Firstly, let me explain the command and then I will tell you how to solve this particular error. We are requesting an X509 certificate. We are asking OpenSSL to use the SHA-256 as the hash function. This particular flag, the notes flag, is going to make sure our private key is not encrypted. We are telling it to generate a new key using RSA as the encryption function with 2048 as the bit length of the key. We are telling it to use this v3rec extension. We are naming our private key as private key.pem and the certificate as the cert.pem. And now if you encounter this particular error, what you need to do is you need to edit a configuration file for OpenSSL and add some text to it. Let's do that now. So we are going to be editing this particular file etc slash SSL slash openSSL.conf. I will share a Stack Overflow link in the video description to figure out where this particular file is located on your system. Now at the end of this particular file, you need to add this v3rec and then basic constraints equals ca true, key usage equals non-repudiation, digital signature and key encipherment. Let's save this file. You may need to save this as sudo And now let's go back to the terminal and try running the same OpenSSL command again. Perfect, it worked this time. Now I'm not going to completely fill out all the details as it is just for test purposes, but in production, you should fill out all of these details. The only thing I'm going to care about is the email address so that we actually know this is the key we just created. A successful execution of this command is going to return in two new files in our folder. One is the certificate and the other is the private key. Our public key is stored in the certificate. Now, before we can continue, we need to download the PSPDF kit distribution source. You can easily do that by going to the PSPDF kit website. I will paste a link to this in the description as well. 
and downloading the standalone vanilla js package so you will click on try sdk for free select your platform as web choose your front end as vanilla javascript download manually and the integration as global variable and click on get started here it will give you a link to download the framework and once you click on this link it will start downloading an archive i already have it downloaded so i'm going to cancel this after you extract this all the files in this particular archive it should result in a folder like this here we have a distribution directory containing the source code and a bunch of other helpful files let's copy all of these and move them over into a new folder in our PSPDF kit demo directory. We are going to name this new folder as PSPDF kit. Open this up and paste all of the files we just unarchived. Our new directory structure should look something like this. We have a PSPDF kit folder, a private key.pem file, and a certificate.pem file. Now, while we are at it, let's also save a new sample PDF file in this directory as well. You can easily create this using any software like Word or Google Docs. I created this in Word and then exported this as a normal PDF. Make sure you rename the file as sample.pdf as well as this name will be referenced later on in the code. Next thing we need to do is to create an index.html file in the PSPDF kit demo folder. This file is going to contain all of the HTML code for loading PSPDF kit and for displaying our sample PDF. In order to do that, I'm going to hop on over to the terminal and open up VS Code. Here, I'm going to create a new file called index.html. And in here, I'm going to paste some code. I will explain what the code does in just a bit. I've taken all of this code from the official documentation, which I will also link in the video description below. The code here is fairly straightforward. We are creating a div with a class of PDF div. We are importing the PSPDF kit library and we are initializing PSPDF kit using the load method. I'm passing the sample PDF as an input and telling PSPDF kit to use the PDF div to initialize in. Upon successful initialization, it will log a success message in the console and if an error occurs it will log the error in the console as well we are giving the pdf div some width and a height it is important to do that because PSPDF kit needs to know how much space it should take and by default all the divs have a height of zero if we do not explicitly provide it a width and a height PSPDF kit is going to error out and fail to load we cannot open this HTML file directly in our browser. We need to use a server. This way our file paths will behave correctly and we will not have any file loading issues. And the easiest way to do that that I've found is to use a VS Code extension called Live Server. I will share a link to this extension in the video description as well. Live Server basically gives you a right click shortcut to open the particular file in the browser using a server. It also features live reload and I will showcase that in a bit as well. Let's go back to VS Code. Uh, let's assume you have installed the extension. You can right click on index.html file and click on open with live server. Voila, it works. Now just to showcase the live reload feature, I'm going to go back to the index.html file and modify the height. Right now it is 100, let's do 50 VH and go back and it is automatically reloaded. I'm going to go back and change it to 100 bh again cool let's move on and try to figure out how we can digitally sign this document so this is what the signature creation workflow looks like according to adobe this is a helpful pdf i'm going to link this pdf in the video description so that you can take a look there are a few steps listed in this and we will go through them one by one however one thing to note right now is that we need to encrypt some data and PSPDF kit does not natively support that. For encryption and for working with certificate files, we will be relying on an external open source library called Forge. Forge will do all the cryptography related heavy lifting for us and will let us focus on the overarching signing workflow. To use Forge in our project, I'm going to add a new script tag. This will just make sure we have imported Forge and we are ready to work with it. Now back to the workflow. We need to create a digest of the document and SHA-256 is one of the recommended algorithms for that. 
then we need to encrypt the digest and for that we will be using RSA and finally we can optionally add some authenticated attributes to the signature as well all of this can easily be done using forge let me share some code first and then explain what is happening I just added two new functions to the code PSPDF kit expects to be given a function that can take as the file contents as an input and then return the signature and the certificate as an array of bytes. So that is exactly what we are going to be doing in this particular function. We start by downloading our cert and the private key using fetch. These are located right next to our index.html file in the PSPDF kit demo folder. So we can directly reference those. Then we load these files in Forge. Then we create a new P7 object using the create signed data constructor. We add the certificate and the signature information to the P7 object. We instruct Forge to use the SHA-256 as the digest algorithm. And then we tell it to use the content type, message digest, and the signing time as the authenticated attributes. The message digest is auto-populated at the time of signing, so we do not need to provide a value for that. Finally, we call the sign method and pass data as true as instructed by Adobe in their official workflow. In the end, we also serialize the P7 object to dir and then convert that into an array of bytes as that is what PSPDF kit expects as a return value from our digital signature function. The string to array buffer function is defined here and it uh, simply takes the bytes and convert those into an array. Now what is left is to actually use this newly created function to sign the document. We can do so by modifying our original PDF loading function like this. Hold on a second. There we go. Pretty straightforward again. We are using the instance of the PSPDF kit object and calling the sign document method. We are passing the signature generation function and then logging the success and error values in the console as required. Now, if you save this file and go back to the browser, you should be able to see this new watermark popping up, telling you that the additional signature may be invalid due to addition of watermark. Firstly, congratulations. Well, you just signed the PDF using your very own digital signatures. But what the heck is going on with this watermark? Let me show you. You can save this PDF file using this export button here and then open it up in Adobe Acrobat Reader. This is what it looks like. So what is happening is PSPDF kit is adding the signature and then after the signature is added, it adds this watermark on top. Now, as I mentioned, if you make the changes to a PDF file after it was signed, Adobe is going to give you a warning that the PDF was tempered with after the signature. And that is exactly what is happening here after PSPDF kit added the watermark on top of a signed PDF document. And you can see that here in the signature panel. Adobe tells us that the document has been altered or corrupted since it was signed. But luckily, once you pay for a PSPDF kit and start using your API key, this watermark will go away and this particular error is also going to go away. And there you have it. You just learned how you can use your very own self-signed certificate to digitally sign a PDF. Now you're all set to sign additional documents using PSPDF kit. If you face any sort of issues, please do not hesitate to reach out. We would love to help you with all of your PDF related needs and guide you along the way. If you want to learn more about OpenSSL and related technologies, please take a look at the links that I've posted in the video description below. Until next time, take care.